Welcome to lecture five, section chapter two, cluster one. So now we're in chapter two. Awesome. So symbolic rules and expressions. Oh, right, real quick. Um, chapter two, you are allowed to start using your handy dandy calculator. Remember, just a scientific calculator, nothing with graphing features on it. So we're looking at symbolic rules and expressions. So first, first example, evaluate the algebraic expression for the given rules. Real quick, when I say algebraic expression, that is something that has a variable in it, for example, x. And since it's just an expression, not an equation, that means there's no equal sign in it. So notice that doesn't have an equal sign in it. That one also does not have an equal sign. And this one also does not have an equal sign. But they all have variables. So these are algebraic expressions. And we're solve them for the given values. So looking at 2x minus 3 to the 0 power, we're going to solve when they give us the x value of 1. So what I'm going to do is and I'm going to look in this problem and find x. Well, x is right here. And I'm going to replace that with 1. So 2, we're taking out x and we're replacing it with the new value of 1. And then minusing 3 to the 0 power. So 2 times 1 is going to be 2. Minus 3 to the 0 power is going to be 1. So 2 minus 1 is going to be 1. Next one. So go ahead and try see if you can plug in the value first and then check back in with me in a second. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to replace x with a negative fourth. So that's going to be negative 3 times negative 1 fourth plus 2 thirds. Well, when we're multiplying two fractions, we're going to add that denominator there and multiply straight across. Negative 3 times negative 1 is going to be positive 3. Remember, negative times negative is a positive. And then 1 times 4 is going to be 4. So plus 2 over 3. So now to add two fractions, remember to add two fractions, they need to have the same denominator. So multiply the top and bottom by 4, and then multiply the top and bottom for here by 3 to get a common denominator of 12. Okay, so let's see, adding across, it's going to be 9 plus 8, which is going to be 17 over 12. And you could also write your mixed answer as, let's see, 12 goes into 17 once. And what's left over? 5. So the mixed number or the improper fraction. Unless specifically stated, you need one answer or the other, either one is acceptable as long as it is simplified. So now for C, go ahead and try C by yourself. Okay, C is kind of tricky because we have two values. K equals zero, so where's K? Well, K is right there. So you're gonna replace that with zero. And then we're replacing H with 0 0.5. So where is H? Well, H is right next to the six. It's being multiplied to the six. So the answer here is going to be 5 times 0 minus 6 times 0 0.5. So 5 times 0 is 0. And then let's just focus on the 6. 6 times 0 0.5, well, that's just 6 times a half. So we're dividing 6 by 2, which is going to be 3. That's going to be negative 3. Or you could just check your calculator for that one. That's going to be... 6 times 0.5, which is 3. So now one real quick note on your calculator. If you wanted to include the negative while you were multiplying, you would not type in negative 6 times 0.5. Why? Oh, look, it actually worked for mine. Wow, okay, most calculators, it does not work. Okay, most of the time, if you typed in that negative, for example, 0.5 times negative 6, most calculators would give you an error symbol. So my calculator somehow doesn't do that. I'm lucky. Most of the time you need to use that little negative symbol right here instead of the subtraction. Okay, so if your calculator gives you the error symbol, try to find your negative symbol because that's probably the one your calculator will accept. I'm just lucky. All right, so our answer is going to be negative 3. Example 2. Let n represent the input variable. Translate the following phrases into an algebraic expression. So n is our input variable. 
for part A. Two less than the input. So our input is n. Two less than that. How would we describe that? Well, if I had 12 pairs of shoes, and uh, let's say my sister had three less than me, how would I write that as an expression? How would I find my answer? What is three less than 12? Three less than 12 is nine. So if I said my sister had three less than I do, that's gonna be 12 minus three, because my sister has three shoes less than I do. So two shoes less than the input is gonna be n minus two, because they're two less than. Here's the next one. 10 less than half of the input. Okay, so the input is being halved. How do we represent half of n? Well, half of n, you could just times it by a half. Because remember, here's that of symbol, that means multiplication. And then we want 10 less than that. Well, remember, we know that when you use that phrase less than, it's tricky, you're gonna be subtraction. So 10 less than half of your input. So the phrase less than normally is subtraction, and of is going to be multiplication. So you can actually rewrite your answer a little more simply as this. Some people would also write their answer as n over two minus 10. Different ways to write your answer. And C, the sum of twice the input and three. So what's happening here? We want the sum of what items? Twice the input and three. Well, sum, what is sum? Sum is addition. The sum is addition. And I'm adding twice the input and three together. Well, I know how to add three right there. But what does twice the input look like? We're twicing it. That's gonna be two times n. So there we go, two plus three. That's twice the input. Let's move on to example three. A square has a perimeter of 44 inches. What is the length of each side? So here's a square and its perimeter. What does the perimeter of a square mean? Well, the perimeter means if you added up all these sides, s plus s plus s plus s, you would get 44. So let's see, that would mean each side should be 11 plus 11 plus 11 plus 11. All right, so the length of each side is 11 inches. Okay, and remember a square, each side of the square has to be exactly the same. So another way you could have thought of it is what number times four gives me 44? And that number would have been 11. So here's a new part. Suppose each side of the square is increased by two inches to create a second square. All right, let's go ahead and just do that. Let's see, we have a square, S. We're gonna increase each side by two. What will the perimeter of the second square be? Well, the perimeter of the second square, that's gonna be, well, 11 plus two. Remember, because S was 11. Let's go ahead and take out that S and replace it with 11. 11 plus two is 13, right? So that's actually a square with side 13 by 13. And the perimeter is when you add up all the sides. So that's gonna be 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13. Or the same thing as just saying 13 times four which is 52. So the perimeter, the perimeter will be 52 inches. So next, suppose each side were increased by X inches, so we don't actually know the number. What will the perimeter of the third square be? So if I was increasing by x inches, let's go ahead and draw this square again. So that's gonna be s plus x, or in our case, remember 11 plus x, 11 plus x 
11 plus x. Oops, that got ugly. Oops, that got even more ugly. Let me go ahead and slow this down a second. 11 plus x, 11 plus x. So instead of adding 2, we're adding x, some unknown quantity. And we want to know how to represent the perimeter of the third square. Well, that's kind of weird, since we don't actually know how to find it, because that's an x value. But remember, to find b, what we did was we just took the length of our side, which was 13, and we multiplied it by 4 to find the perimeter. We can just do the same thing. We'll take the length of each side, which is just 11 plus x, and times that by 4. And that, whatever that may be, will be my perimeter. So the perimeter of the third square will be 11 plus x times 4. Whatever that is, it's just some algebraic random expression with the variable x stuck in. So if you wanted to increase the size of your square by 3, you could plug in 3 for x, kind of like we had been practicing up above in example 1. Or maybe you wanted to know what the perimeter would be if you increased each side by 7. You could go ahead and just plug 7 in and calculate your answer. Kind of neat. Last page. So at a parking garage, it costs $5 for parking and $2 for each hour parked. Write an expression for the cost of X hours parked at the garage. So first, let's get an idea of what's happening here. Um, let's just go ahead and do the number of hours. And the cost. So if you parked there for, well, you actually didn't park there a whole hour, how much would you spend? Well, it's just $5 for parking and $2 for each hour. So if you haven't spent an hour there, it's just going to be $5. What if you spent an hour at the gar garage? Well, that's going to be one hour, and your cost is going to be $5 plus 2, because that you spent one hour there. How about if you spent two hours there? What would that look like? Well, that would be the flat rate of $5 plus your $2, but now you spent two hours there. So that's going to be two times two. What if you spent three hours there? Well, it's the flat rate of $5 plus $2 for each hour. And how many hours did you spend there? Three. So maybe you're noticing a pattern here. Go ahead and try to see what it would look like for four hours. Well, for four hours, following this pattern, it's just going to be five plus two times the number of hours. So another way of writing it is just going to be five plus two times the number of hours. Well, what is the number of hours? The number of hours is x. So right there is my algebraic expression. 5 plus 2 times x. So if I wanted to figure out how much it would cost me to park there for 5 hours, I would just do 5 plus 2 times 5. It would cost me $15. Okay, so a pretty neat way to use that expression. Example 5. Ron had several pieces of candy. He ate three, but shared the rest between Harry, Hermione, and himself. Algebraically represent the number of pieces Hermione got.